What's up everybody and welcome back to OpenStax Algebra and Trigonometry Chapter 1 Section 2 Exponents and Scientific Notation. Let's do it. The first question is 2 to the third the same as 3 to the second. Explain. So 2 to the third. So that exponent of 3 means we're going to have 3 2s multiplying each other. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 3 to the second means we're gonna have two instances of three multiplying itself, which would give us nine. So these are not the same, they are different, done. What is the purpose of scientific notation? So to give you an example of scientific notation, I could write a number like 1,200,000 like this. It's got a lot of zeros, takes a little while to write. I could write it in scientific notation as 1.2 times 10 to the sixth. That's because this has six places to the right of one. So the value of using scientific notation is you can write really large numbers in a more condensed fashion. Now, imagine if this wasn't 1.2 million, but it was 1.2 billion. This would really save us a lot because all I'd have to do is change that six to a nine. Likewise, if I wanna write something really, really small, like 0 .0000003, I could rewrite this as three times 10 to the negative 10th. So again, it helps us to write these really large and really small numbers in a convenient way. For the following exercises, simplify the given expression. Write answers with positive exponents. So all we have to do is evaluate nine squared. That's again, nine times nine, two nines multiplying against each other. So nine squared is just nine times nine, which is of course, 81. I've got three squared times three to the third power. And I can approach this one of two ways. I can first apply the exponents and then multiply those remaining numbers. Or I can use my exponent addition rule, which I'm gonna to choose to do. So when I've got the same base multiplying, I can add the exponent. So it becomes three to the two plus three, which is three to the fifth. Then three to the fifth is three times three times three times three times three, five times. So that is 243. So we're gonna use our exponent rule here that when you have a floating exponent like this outside the parentheses, you can bring it and multiply it against that exponent inside. So negative two times two is two to the negative fourth. Then I'm gonna rewrite this with a positive exponent as one over two to the fourth. And what is two to the fourth? It's two times two times two times two. So this gives us one over 16, boom, done. Here we're gonna use the exponent rules of division where I have the same basis. I'm going to subtract those exponents. So it's three minus four which is the same as 11 to the negative one. And then to, again, convert that back to a positive exponent, I simply make it one over 11 to the positive one, but we don't need to write one as an exponent, so it's 1 11th done. Again, I'm gonna use my exponent multiplication rules. That's gonna go in and multiply the zero, so it's just gonna be eight to the zero. Then we're gonna use the rule that anything to the zeroth power is one. That's the winner, done. For the following exercises, write each expression with a single base. Do not simplify further. Write answers with positive exponents. First, I'm gonna go left to right because I have multiplication and division. They're on the same level, so I can approach it that way. First, I'm gonna add these exponents. That's what we do when we multiply the same base. So two plus three is five. Then I've got four to the fifth divided by four to the negative fourth. Now, when I have division, I'm subtracting the exponent. So it's four to the fifth minus negative four and that becomes a plus, right? Minus negative becomes a plus, so five plus four is nine. Four to the ninth power is the winner, done. 12 to the third times 12 to the first, so we're gonna carry out the parentheses first, right? And so don't forget there's a little invisible one there. So once again, we're multiplying, so we're adding the exponents, it becomes 12 to the fourth. Now we're gonna apply this 10 on the outside. So it's on the outside floating like this, it comes in and multiplies the four on the inside, so we end up with 10 times four, which is 40. Boom, done. Once again, we got two numbers multiplying, which means we're going to add the exponents. So negative six plus negative three is negative nine. But the instruction said to place this with a positive exponent. So anything to the negative exponent is the same as one over that same expression, but now the nine becomes positive. One over seven to the ninth, done. For the following exercises, express the decimal in scientific notation. So the key to scientific notation is we only want one number to the left of the decimal that's not zero, and everything else can be to the right. So I'm trying to get this dot to right to the right of that three. So I'm gonna rewrite this number a little bit bigger with four zeros. So I'm gonna move the decimal over step by step. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five. So 
So there's my new decimal point. Now I've got 3.14 times 10 to the, now again, I moved it once, twice, three times, four times, five times. But since I moved the decimal to the right, it's a negative five. This makes sense because again, this should multiply back out to get this, right? This would be one over 100,000. So that's what we want. This is the answer, done. For the following exercises, convert each number in scientific notation to standard notation. So now we're going the other way. So I'm gonna rewrite this, then I'm gonna take the number and bring it down here. Now, normally when we're converting, we bring the decimal into this position. Now we're going backwards. Now since it's 10 to the 10th and that 10 is positive, to go back, we're going to send the decimal to the right. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And then I'm gonna fill these in with zeros like so. Now I'm gonna rewrite this. And just for fun, I'm gonna add commas, one, 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 and we can see that this number is 16 billion in standard form, done. For the following exercises, simplify the given expression. Write answers with positive exponents. So again, even though these are variables, we have the same rules that apply. A cubed times A squared, we add those exponents. So three plus two is five. And I'm gonna rewrite the denominator as A to the one, because remember when there's no exponent, there's an invisible one there then this is division. So I have the same base. I'm once again going to be subtracting the exponents. So it's going to be a to the five minus one, which is a to the fourth, done. So in this case, first I'm going to apply my exponent rules if possible, but since these are different bases, I can't do anything. So I'm then just going to let the two come in and multiply both of these as we have with those floating exponent rules. So two times three here, and this would be two times four here. This would leave us with b to the sixth times c to the eighth, done. So I'm gonna rewrite this as follows because I wanna remember that division is really just that fraction symbol and vice versa. So it's a b squared over d to the negative third. Now when that negative exponent is in the denominator, it's pretty cool because Likewise, when it's in the numerator, we just drop it down and make it positive. We do the exact same thing here, it comes up and becomes a positive three. So finally we're left with a, b squared, d to the third, done. Here we've got m to the fourth over n to the zero. And the main exponent rule we wanna use here is anything to the zeroth power is one. So this changes to m to the fourth over one, which can simply be rewritten as m to the fourth, done. So I'm gonna rewrite this as follows. The first thing I like to do is I like to remember that my negative exponents are in the wrong spot. So I'm gonna move them into the other position. Like if it's in the numerator, I'm gonna put it in the denominator and vice versa. So this becomes Q to the third on top times Q squared over P squared on the bottom. And then I'm gonna bring this down to make it P to the positive four. Now I can apply my exponent addition rules because we got multiplying of the same base. So that becomes Q to the fifth on top and P to the sixth on bottom. I've got that floating exponent here, so I'm gonna multiply in against that seven, so it's gonna be y to the three times seven, which is 21. And again, I'm gonna re-represent this as a fraction instead of a division problem, so it's over x to the 14th. That's as far as we can go, boom, done. This is a formatting issue, and it actually should be five squared m divided by five to the zeroth. So first I'm gonna rewrite it again in fraction format. So five squared m over five to the zeroth m. Then I'm gonna apply these exponents. Five squared is 25 m over five to the zero. Again, that's just one. So I don't even need to write that because it's just m, one times m is m. Then we can cancel out the m's because m divided by m is one. So those effectively cancel out to a one and we're left with 25. So first things first, I'm going to move this negative exponent from the denominator to the numerator. Now I have two cubed times three a squared. So two cubed is two times two times two. It's three of them multiplying. Two times two times two is eight. So I can approach this one of two ways. I can first multiply in against the exponents, both of which are one, and then carry out the operations. Or I can recognize that this is 3a times 3a, that's 3a squared. So 3a times 3a is going to be 9a squared. And last but not least, we multiply those numbers, the number against the coefficient, eight times nine is 72, 72a squared, boom, done. Now before I begin, I'm going to get rid of that negative exponent. So the c is gonna stay there, but again, 
it's kind of in the numerator if we think about this being over one. So I'm gonna drop the b to the negative third to be b to the positive three in the denominator. Then I've still got to cube both of these. So again, I'm gonna use my exponent rules and remember that c is to the first power. Multiply and multiply. Three times one is three and three times three is nine. So we have c to the third over b to the ninth done. So again, I've got a negative exponent being applied to this entire component. So I'm gonna drop that to a denominator, one over nine z cubed squared, and then multiplying by a y out front. So this y is gonna multiply that numerator of one, and it's gonna then be y over nine z cubed to the second power. Last but not least, I'm going to apply my exponent rule and put a little one there. The two is gonna go there and the two is gonna multiply it there. And you gotta remember that nine has a one. Sometimes people forget that. So now we got y over nine squared z to the two times three, which is six. Last but not least, nine squared is of course 81. And we've got y over 81 z to the sixth, boom. A dime is the thinnest coin in US currency. A dime's thickness measures 1.35 times 10 to the negative third meters. Rewrite the number in standard notation. So I'm gonna take this 1.35 and write it here. And again, when I've got a negative exponent and I'm putting it back into standard notation, I'm going to go to the left by three. One, two, three. And this makes sense because if it's times 10 to the negative three, that's like one over a thousand. We want the final number to be smaller than 1.35. If you did it the other way, you'd get 1,350 and that wouldn't make sense. Now I'm gonna fill in the gaps with zeros and my final answer is 0 0.00135, boom, done. A terabyte is made up of approximately 1,099,500,000,000 bytes rewrite in scientific notation. So once again, we're gonna move the decimal all the way over right before that last number. So I'm gonna rewrite it as 1.0995, and we can drop the rest of the zeros. So now the question is, it's times 10 to the what power? So I'm gonna rewrite this number down here, and then we're gonna count all of the spaces we have to go. So we're going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So that means it's going to be ten to the twelfth power. And again, notice now in this case, we're moving that decimal to the left. It's like we're making this number smaller. So this has got to be a positive. It's got to be a big number. This is the winner. Done. One picometer is approximately 3.397 times 10 to the negative 11th inches. Rewrite this length using standard notation. So I'm gonna rewrite this number down here and I've got 3.397. Then it's negative 11. So again, when it's a negative exponent and we're putting it back into standard form, standard notation, we have to move this to the left 11 times. And that makes sense because if we moved it to the right, we get a huge number and that's not what we should be getting when we've got a negative exponent. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Then I'm gonna fill in all the spaces with zeros. So my final answer will be point with 10 zeros and then three, three, nine, seven for the win, done. For the following exercises, use a graphing calculator to simplify. Round the answers to the nearest hundredth. So I'm gonna go ahead and simplify this as much as possible and then I'll enter it into a calculator. So first I'm gonna move that four to the negative third to the numerator. So I've got 12 to the third, times four to the third, times m to the 33rd, and all of this squared. Then I'm gonna use my exponent rule to kind of multiply all of these guys like so. Then I've got 12 to the sixth, four to the sixth, m to the 66th. So 12 to the sixth times four to the sixth is this gigantic number. And the m to the 66th just stays there. So I've got one, two, two, three, zero, five, nine, zero, four, six, four, times m to the 66th, boom, done. For the following exercises, simplify the given expression, write the answer with positive exponents. So the really cool thing that you can do when you've got a fraction like this and both having a negative exponent on the outside is right off the bat, you can take the reciprocal and make it a to the third over three squared and then have that exponent that was negative now be positive. And then we'll rewrite this one as well, a to the fourth over two squared to the second power. Now I'm gonna simplify what we have in the parentheses. And again, I could take the exponent and just multiply it out. I'm just choosing to do something differently here. So three squared is nine. 
and two squared is four. Now I'm gonna square both of these. So for the top, I'm still gonna multiply that exponent like so. And for the bottom, I am multiplying the exponent of one, but I'm just gonna think about it as doing nine squared. So this gives me a to the sixth over 81, that's nine squared at times, a to the eighth over four squared, which is 16. So last but not least, I'm gonna multiply these guys and add the exponents. That gives six plus eight, which is 14. On the denominator, I'm gonna multiply 81 times 16. That is 1,296 for the win, done. So the first thing I'm gonna do once again is move the negative exponent. So we got m squared n cubed, and then that c to the negative third moves to the top, and we got a squared that stays on the bottom, times, since everything is negative on the top, it's just gonna have a one there, and then we're gonna have a to the seventh, n to the second, those both dropping to become positive, and then m squared c to the fourth. Now when these multiply, these are the only same basis, so their exponents add. So, and on the top, it's just multiplying by one, so we get m squared n cubed c cubed over, two plus seven is a to the ninth, n to the second, m to the second, and c to the fourth. Now I can do some nice canceling. So since I got an m squared on the top and the bottom, they cancel out to one, that's pretty nice. Then with the n cubed and the n squared, we can think about this one of two ways. We can think about this first as subtraction as they're dividing. So it'd be three minus two, and you're left with n to the one. The other way you can think about it is n cubed is n times n times n. n squared is n times n. So what's gonna happen? These two are gonna cancel out and you're left with a single n in the numerator. Likewise, with the c cubed over c to the fourth, you subtract those and you get c to the negative one in the numerator, which would be c to the first in the denominator. The other way, again, to think about it is c times c times c over c times c times c times c, cancel, 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 and the c in the denominator. So finally, we're left with a to the ninth in the denominator. The n's cancel out to an n, to the first in the numerator, and the c's cancel out to a c to the first in the denominator, boom, done. So first I'm gonna deal with these negative exponents, negative meaning I can put it in the denominator if it's in the numerator and vice versa. So that b to the negative third is gonna go to the top as b to the positive third, and this is gonna go all drop to the denominator. So we have a, b squared, c to the positive third power, and all of this is squared. Then this becomes b cubed on top. On the bottom, if I'm cubing all of this, right, and imagine a one there and a one there, it's gonna multiply in, so it's gonna be a to the third, b to the three times two, which is six, and c to the three times one, which is three, and all of this squared. So now I can multiply this in, but check this out. I can do a little simplification. I've got a b to the third over b to the sixth. Again, we can look at this as subtraction. Three minus six, which is negative three but that means it belongs in the denominator anyways as just a b to the third. So I'm gonna rewrite this now as one over a cubed b to the third c to the third, right? It's almost like reverse subtraction. It's also you can go, hey, six minus three, but then it stays as three in the denominator because the bigger one is the, in the denominator. So now we're gonna square this. One squared is of course one, and then we're gonna multiply all of these by two. And we've got one over a to the sixth b to the sixth, C to the sixth, boom, done. Planck's constant is an important unit of measure in quantum physics. It describes the relationship between energy and frequency. The constant is written as this number. Write Planck's constant in standard notation. So this is gonna be a lot of work and a lot of writing. So I'm gonna first write this entire number here as 6.626. 0.6957. Then we're gonna move the decimal over 34 times. But I'm not gonna do it all the way because it's gonna take forever. So just imagine moving once, and then I have to move it 33 more times. That means the final answer is gonna have a decimal, 33 zeros, and this number. So here we've got my 33 zeros, and then we've got 6626069. And just for good form, we'll throw a zero in the front, although that doesn't change the value. There is your answer done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please click that like button. And if you wanna see more from the Scalar Learning Channel, make sure to click subscribe. Thank you guys so much for joining, and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.